Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to the new arpeggiator on the side called Gadget 3. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Additionally, please um, leave comments, ideas, etc., etc., as it helps with growing the traffic through the channel and therefore for me to bring more tutorials, giveaways, etc., etc. Thank you again. So we are inside the uh, core gadget frame, as you can see, and um, let's, as always, create a new project. Clicking OK. And then let's select a gadget and why not? Let's select Salzburg, which is a fantastic gadget that produces a premium acoustic piano. So it works extremely well with some really, really nice preset. Now let's click on the gadget itself to enter that clip and we see the uh, gadget panel at the moment and um, the default view is the gadget view here we have an effect view as well which we started to have a look at it through other tutorials but we also have a play view and there is where i want to focus on today so what is it it's um it's an arpeggiator which of course you can use to record arpeggiated notes inside uh, your clip but you can also use, for example, for a live playing, if you want an arpeggiator, of course, arpeggiating, for example, through the chords or notes that uh, you press on the keyboard. So it's split in two parts, and the top parts are the controls, and then underneath you have the keyboard, which, uh, depending on the vertical position, it changes the velocity. So, lower velocity up to the top where you have a higher velocity and therefore a higher amplitude and the volume is also higher. So at the very top, then you are split into two further sections. The um, top one is related to the arpeggiator, so the configuration of the arpeggiator itself, and the bottom one is related to the scale here, which you have visible. So let's start with the scale. So where you see the uh, dot here is where you have your scale key, in this case C. Okay, of course, you can also change that to be C sharp, D, etc. with the arrow, but let's leave it to C. Then you can enable to have chords on and off. Then, of course, you have the um, scale type, which in this case you can select between chromatic, Dorian, Parisian, etc., etc. So, a lot of different selection. Of course, you can still use the arrows um, left and right. Then you have the octave position. So, let's disable chord. Let's go up an octave. So, you can hear that it's gone up an octave. And then, of course, you have the octave range here. At the moment, it says two. If I say three, you can see the number of steps here have increased to cover three octaves. And now I'm going to use a little bit more of my fingers instead of the uh, mouse cursor, so you hear uh, less the clicks uh, from the mouse. And of course, depending on your preference, you can increase or decrease the range, which increases decreases the number of steps and notes you have available on the screen. And it might help if you have less uh, uh, octaves represented to have a bigger uh, steps if you have bigger fingers, for example, with the iPad uh, is smaller, not necessarily your fingers. Um, and then you can decide how many steps you want to have up to seven, of course, as you can see. Okay, that is the configuration of the scale. And then at the top, what you have is um, run. So if you click run, it will start to run as an arpeggiator. And of course, it will produce only those notes that you have selected in this case, C, but let's select two notes. At the moment, it is going up, so going from the lowest note and then the second and the third etc but you can change the pattern to have it down from the top down alternating you have two type of alternating random and also trigger and if you don't know what they actually do my suggestion is to select one like alternator enable the recording here record and then see what um, notes are recorded like 
like in this case i have recorded and now i minimize the panel and you can see the notes which have been recorded in that case you can study as well the arpeggiator which um, has been created now you have also a key here an option for key sync so uh, and that uh, that means that every time you press a key will restart if it is enable um, the arpeggiator okay or you may want to have it continue from where it was. And that is particularly important when you have more than one octave range that is being played. So at the moment it's going using only one octave. So let's listen. One way is actually to activate the chord. The chord. So you can press only uh, one note. Let's go down an octave position. Down again. Now let me show you with two octaves range. Three. Four. You can see if it is at the top of the octaves with key sync disabled, it will continue from there. Well, instead, if I have key sync enabled, we'll start from the bottom. It will always restart. Then you have a number of gate type. It's almost like a patterns. No many, unfortunately, only 15, but um, nevertheless, still useful. Okay, and then you can also change the gay time. Let me reset these down to one, actually, like so, and um, or the opposite side is more of a staccato. Yeah, and this is the arpeggiator inside Korg Gadget Free. I think this is a great addition. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and as always, see you next time. Bye.